Greetings, loved ones. In our last episode, I said that we were going to take a series of tests this week, but I decided to put that off um, and do another continuation of control. So today we're going to talk about resisting control when it's disguised as love, because seeing through an abuser's performances of love gives victims renewed power. Please help us get these messages out, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, hit the like button and the notification bell, and please share these messages with others. You never know, just by doing so, you could save a life. Abusive and controlling partners often use loving acts to manipulate their victims. When intimidation, isolation, and even physical abuse no longer seem to be working, the abuser pulls out the wedding albums or acts charming and contrite to win the abused partner back. This usually ha happens in the honeymoon phase of the cycle. One former abuser, for instance, described how he regularly sent flower arrangements to his girlfriend's workplace so her co-workers would tell her how lucky she was to be with him. Some people call these acts of love the honeymoon or making up phase of a cycle of violence. It is better to think of these as bait leading to a trap. Occasional acts of kindness are a grooming strategy to retain control and make a partner stay in the relationship. An abuser may intersperse loving acts with angry outbursts, sexual coercion, and manipulation. And the victim may welcome the candy, the kisses, and the compliments, believing these are signs that the abusive partner is changing. However, the kinder periods are most likely ploys to make the abused partner stay. The abuser chooses to behave kindly when they believe that expressing love is the best strategy for retaining control. These periods of kindness work to keep the partner hopeful and coming back for more. A survivor named Laura says that she learned to stop falling for her former acts of love by thinking about them as bait. She saw him as a trapper, setting out an alluring object that was hard to resist so he could keep her where he wanted her. She began to identify the overtly negative words and actions as poison and the loving acts as bait. This made it easier to dismiss his affectionate attempts at reconciliation because she knew their true intention to keep her trapped. Laura says, I realized that no matter what the lore looked like, it was either bait or poison. Bait if it was sweet and engaging, or poison if it was him lashing out in an attempt to lodge some self-doubt in my mind as he had often done before. Once, she says, he could create nostalgia about the time we were together and I would decide to take him back. But after I considered it bait, these acts lost their power. Unless people have had experience with a coercively controlling person, they may not understand that communication can function this way. They will assume that the abuser's loving acts or words are like anyone else's attempt to convey genuine affection. But sweet, coercive control communication is sugary poison. Picture a hunter placing a meat in the trap or an angler using a worm to reel in the catch. Think about poison and bait can set free people in coercive control relationships. So be cautious like an animal in the forest. You do not need to eat from the trap. Self-preservation equals self-love. With one in three women experiencing domestic violence worldwide, the question is not if you will encounter a victim of violence. The question before God is what will you do when you do encounter them? You could be the person who saves a life. You are called. We are all called to be champions for justice. Those who suffer violence need to know that those who love them and those who don't even know them will step out and reach out to them to give them the courage and the help they need to leave before it is too late. Help us get these messages out. Please subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hit the like button and the notification bell. And please share these messages with others because you never know just by doing so you could save a life. If you're a victim of violence, I want you to listen to me. You've been told lie after lie after lie after lie. I want to tell you the truth. The truth is you are valued. You are loved. You are intelligent and you are beautiful. And God does not want you to suffer violence. He wants you to live free from violence in peace and tranquility. There is a way out and it is not your fault. Abuse is not love. If you're a victim of violence, please reach out to somebody. And if you find yourself in a dangerous situation, call 911 for help. Tomorrow we will discuss, is it normal jealousy or the start of abuse? Until then, God bless you.